Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 2nd of August 2019 and we're looking at President Trump's announcement yesterday where he has proposed the raising of tariffs on China and we also look at the implications. Yesterday, we published a video in highlighting the reasons gold and silver prices fell, quite surprisingly to many, even though the Fed cut rates. It was entitled, Why Gold and Silver Prices Fell Following Fed Rate Cut. We've placed a link to this video in the description below, in case you haven't had the opportunity of listening to it. Well, within about two hours of releasing that video, President Trump announced that he will impose a fresh 10% tariff on another $300 billion worth of Chinese goods in a sharp escalation of a trade war between the two countries. Immediately we saw gold and silver prices rise and the undercover YouTube pumper assassins on our channel couldn't wait to come out and tell us we were wrong about gold and silver, completely missing the fact either deliberately or ignorantly, that we stated both yesterday and in numerous previous videos that unless the trade situation with China is resolved, this is likely to prove beneficial for gold and silver prices, gold in particular, and silver secondarily. And yes, we also mentioned Iran, just in case there is another announcement in that area, and they try and lurch forward again. Now, before we go into more depth concerning these tariffs, we would like to point out that during Jerome Powell's statement and question and answer session on Wednesday, one of the reasons he stated that the Federal Reserve decided to cut interest rates was to mitigate the ramifications of, and to use his words to, quote, take some account of trade policy uncertainty, unquote. In other words, and to quote ourselves, to provide an insurance policy against global recession and trade policies which cause destabilization and uncertainty. Again, we produced a YouTube video on this matter on Wednesday entitled Fed Cuts Rates First Time Since 2008 Assessment. And again, we place this in the description box below. To support this, Eric Vinograd, the senior US economist at Alliance Bernstein, told Reuters this week, quote, The trade war has been disruptive to the global economy, and it's created a feedback loop. Fed policymakers are responding primarily to risks, and most of the risks to which they are responding are coming out of the administration, unquote. Now, whether one fully agrees with this statement or not, the point is the Trump administration decisions impact other organizations' decision-making, including businesses and, of course, that of the Fed. A more worrying aspect, if true, is a statement made by Nick Maroutsos, co-head of Global Bonds at Janus Henderson Investors, who stated... Quote, Trump has obviously attempted to influence the Federal Reserve to further his agenda. Trump wants lower rates to keep down the dollar, a lower dollar, and all of that will help his campaign. Unquote. Now this is one of the reasons being muted why the President has imposed the latest increase in tariffs. In other words, to put more pressure again on the Fed to reduce rates in the future which we shall now look at in more depth. We have reported extensively that the Trump administration had just over a week ago resumed bilateral talks with China. However, despite some positive noises from the White House at the time, they have in reality showed little signs of a breakthrough. With the President angry about the Fed not being more dovish with its forward guidance, 
His irritation that a deal on trade appears not to be advancing and his criticisms of China not honouring promises to buy more US agricultural products at this week's negotiations in Shanghai, yesterday he announced via tweet a proposed fresh tariff of 10% on another $300 billion worth of Chinese goods to take effect from the 1st of September 2019. This, in effect, would cover all Chinese imports into the United States. He further added, when speaking to reporters later, that the 10% tariff was a short-term measure and that tariffs could be lifted further in stages to more than 25%. And he ended those talks or discussions with the reporters with the comment, quote, Somebody should have done this with China a long time ago, unquote. <clears throat> Now clearly, the Fed will have received a heads up about this proposal, which is, in our opinion, one of the main reasons they lowered rates. Because as far as the US economy is concerned, a quarter percent cut would make very little difference up to that point. Now, we know why, therefore, Jerome Powell kept adding the propping up of business and consumer confidence as one of the repeated reasons for the decision. Trump's announcement or tweet brought swift comments from both China and the US. China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, said on the sidelines of a meeting of Southeast Asian ministers in Bangkok, quote, Adding tariffs is definitely not a constructive way to resolve economic and trade frictions. It's not the correct way. The US Chamber of Commerce said the latest tariffs on China, quote, will only inflict greater pain on American businesses, farmers, workers and consumers and undermine an otherwise strong US economy, unquote. And yesterday, Trump's former chief economic advisor, Gary Cohn, said in a BBC interview that the tariff battle was having a, quote, dramatic impact, unquote, on US manufacturing and capital investment. Now, we all know that these tariffs are being used by the president essentially to provoke China into action or a hopefully mutually beneficial decision. However, there are some who argue that China can and possibly will deliberately not deal with President Trump and wait his time out in the hope that the US economy fails, President Trump is replaced with a new Democratic president or Democrat president who might be more favourable to China. We cannot, of course, attest to this as a certainty, but one does have to ask, which economy is more likely to buckle? A democracy with a small GDP growth of just over 2%, and with a president who is lagging somewhat in the opinion polls, or a totalitarian state where the president is in position for life and where the people of that country are used to suffering for the so-called benefit of the state. What we can attest to, though, is that prior to Trump's tweet yesterday, the Dow Jones was up over 200 points. But as a result of it, it closed down 280 points. This morning, all European, Middle Eastern, African and Asian markets are down. The dollar index, which was above 98.5, is currently 98.2. And gold is standing at $1,435 and silver at $16.12. We also have the jobs report coming out later today, which could have an additional impact on these prices. Let's hope President Trump's strategy works. For if it does not, then there will be many US businesses going to the wall. The US economy will falter badly, and there may be a new president in the White House in 2021. Of course, it would be worth it if it brings China to heel, as they have been bad actors as far as world trade is concerned. But there is also the possibility that they will remain equally as belligerent and try and wait out the clock. What do you think? 
We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.